Okay, hello everybody. So hopefully those of you that are joining us for the live experience are now here and watching. And I know some of you will be watching this later on. So for those of you that are, I hope you're having a wonderful time, whatever you're doing. So good morning to some of you, good afternoon to others, and I'm sure good evening to a few of you. Uh, for myself, it is 5 p.m. and I'm currently in London. And I'd like to welcome you all to our first of a series of webinars this one being focused on the UK and Ireland. Now, before I introduce myself properly, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about what we're gonna be covering over the next 45 minutes to an hour. Why are we here? So the things we'll be covering are, why the UK and Ireland? So we're gonna be talking about some of the highlights as to what people come here to see, why I personally believe you should come to the UK and Ireland, and some of the main things we cover on the expat tours. I'll be breaking this down into three main sections, focusing on history, culture, and landscape. Now, as we're going along, some of you I can see have already started asking some questions. I'll hopefully cover most of the things in the presentation. At the end of the presentation, we'll have a Q&A session. So I'll pick some of the questions out and I'll go through them one by one and hopefully get around to answering all of them in good time. Anything we don't get around to answering, we can still get back to you a bit later and you can also contact the customer service team. So after we've gone through why the UK and Ireland, we'll be moving on to some of the top sites. Any myth busters? So some of you may have some preconceptions about what the UK is like, whether it's about our weather, our people, our food. So we're gonna be cracking some of those for you. Should be a little bit of fun as well as being a little bit informative as well. And obviously we're gonna be talking a little bit about post COVID travel. There are some things that of course will have changed since we were touring back in 2019. We're just gonna to touch on what the main things are and hopefully put some of your worries to rest. Then we're gonna hear a little bit about what other people have to say. Some of the people that have previously been on our UK and Ireland tours, how their experience was and share some of their advice with you guys as well. Then we'll talk about the different tours that cover this region, uh, as well as some of the optional experiences available, how you can approach the optionals, whether it comes to paying for them, whether you have time to do them all, and any other questions you might have relating to this. And finally, we'll be talking about some tips, not the kind of tips that you put in an envelope at the end of the tour, but some general advice from me to you about how to make the most out of visiting the UK and Ireland. Of course, we'll be concluding then with our Q&As. Throughout this whole presentation, do feel free to start writing your Q&As in the comment box. The way you can do this is if you're on a phone, there should be a small gray arrow on the right hand side. If you click this, the window will separate into two. You can then type your questions. And if you're on a computer, you can probably already see the little box down on the right hand corner. You can write them in public or it would be easier if you click on Q&A mode and you can write your questions in there. So guys, who am I? So my name is Luke and I am a tour leader for Expat Explore. Some of you may have been on tour with me in the past. Some of you may have even seen me in some of the photos and videos shared on the community page or in our old YouTube series, Behind the Bucket List. Now I've been a tour leader with Expat Explore since 2019. However, I've been a tour guide, tour director, tour leader, whatever you want to call it, for about seven years now, all across the UK and Ireland, but also across greater Europe as well. However, it's the UK and Ireland that I specialize in, hence why I'm here today. Now, a little bit more about me. I love being a tour guide. Uh, here's a little picture of me on our 2021 Christmas tour. So the end of last year up in Edinburgh. Uh, of course, if you do come to Scotland with me, you will get to see me in the kilt. Uh, but as well as touring, I do enjoy other things, believe it or not. Uh, I do love a little bit of surfing as well. Anything generally outdoorsy, if I'm in the sea, up a mountain, out camping somewhere, I'm a happy bunny. But I am happiest when I've got a microphone in my hand and I'm on a coach with you lovely people. I've actually just gotten back from a seven day tour of Ireland, our Ireland Explorer Tour. And I can only express just how amazing it feels to be back. And this is the great thing. We are back and now you can be back with us as well. So hopefully this is gonna give you the information you need to get over here and join us on tour. So 
why the UK and Ireland? So again, I am from the UK myself. I'm actually from here in London. Uh, I've lived all over the UK. I've lived in Bath, Liverpool, and spent many a year traveling around different parts of the British Isles, as well as Ireland. But instead of me talking for ages about the different things I love about it, because I could go on for hours, I've broken it down into three main categories. And these are history, culture, and landscape. And we're gonna start with history. Now, the UK, when it comes to history, this is broken down into a few different areas. Firstly, we look at the medieval period. This is a time when people are fascinated by them. And this is a time of kings, queens, castles, things like this. And our tours have a big focus on this area. Uh, we have trips to all kinds of castles all over the UK and Ireland. Believe it or not, the England itself has over 4,000 castles. Wales has 427 castles. And Ireland has a whopping 30,000 castles. So the first thing we get asked on these tours is, are we going to see a castle? The answer is yes. You're not just going to see them. You're going to go inside them. You're going to walk around them. You're going to learn about them. You can even kiss a stone in one of them. Uh, yes, I'm, of course, talking about the Blarney Castle in Ireland. I was actually there three days ago. And even post-COVID, you can still kiss the stone. And if you do, the gift of the gap may be yours. This picture I've just shared here is from Bunratty Castle, uh, which is included on our Ireland Explorer Tour. This is a picture here from Ross Castle from our Ring of Kerry optional, which again is on our UK and Ireland tour, as well as our Ireland Explorer Tour. And finally, one of the most popular and famous castles in the whole of the UK, it is Edinburgh Castle. Uh, here we learn all about the interesting history of Scotland. So you're going to learn about characters like William Wallace, Robert the Bruce, the Scottish Wars of Independence, and all these kind of events that many of us have read about in school, we've seen in the movies, but you're going to be in the actual places where these key events took place. And again, they'll always be presented to you by your guides, like myself, sometimes with local guides and mainly by the locations themselves. Now, as well as the medieval history, we focus on other periods as well. Of course, one of the most famous landmarks in the UK and even Europe is Stonehenge, dating back to the Neolithic times. So whether it's the Neolithic period, the Tudors, the Anglo-Saxons, the Romans down in Bath, uh, the Elizabethans, the Georgians, we're going to touch on all of the major periods of history whilst here in the country. And uh, when going around, again, if there are any of you who are budding historians yourself, you can always ask us more questions about these things. I've just seen someone's comment card. Yes, Trevor, castles are the best. Uh, you may be able to tell I'm a little bit enthusiastic about them. Now, for those of you that are thinking, do you know what? The history is cool, but it's not so much for me. There's a lot more going on in the UK and Ireland than just history. Of course, we have a vibrant culture here as well. Now, this was a photo of my group last week at the Guinness Storehouse. In terms of food and drink, it's not just fish and chips, guys. We've got a whole range of delicacies, whether it's haggis in Scotland, traditional Irish beef stew, scouse in Liverpool, or the traditional Sunday roast itself. As well as that, we have one of the most dominant beer cultures in all of Europe. We may not have invented beer, but we've certainly perfected many of its recipes. And we try to include many opportunities that will allow you to get to sample many of the local goods from the different regions that we explore whilst in the UK and Ireland. Of course, music is a big part of any culture. Uh, this is a photo outside the Cavern Club in Liverpool from Christmas time. Now, of course, when in Liverpool, we're going to be focusing a lot on the history of the Beatles. And for any music fans out there, this is where you'll have an opportunity to go to the Beatles Museum. You'll even get to go into the Cavern Club itself and listen to some live music. However, when it comes to music, it's not just about the famous bands. We also cover a whole range of traditional folk music from different periods, the different countries you're going to see on tour. You may even get to a few live shows yourself. And I'll show you some of that in just a moment. Also, there's a lot of art to explore, a lot of sculpture. This is a picture from the Angel of the North. And this is one of the key stops on the Great Britain tour that we stop at. And there's going to be so much art that you're going to see along the way, whether it's in the form of sculpture, the many galleries available to you in your free time as well. 
Now, in terms of the musical experiences and the more cultural experiences, there are two that people always rave about when in the UK and Ireland. One of them is the spirit of Scotland, the traditional music and folk night of Scotland. And the other is the Merry Ploughboys in Ireland. And I was at this show on the Friday just gone. So literally three days or two days ago. And it is as fantastic now as it was back in 2019. And I would like to share with you guys a little taste of what we experienced at the time. And so here is a short video to show you what you can expect to see at a traditional Irish folk show. In the merry month of June, first of all my part had left the girls a tune, nearly broken. Alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, I am cockles and muscles. Alive, alive, oh! Sure, ring for the tooth for the night. Whack for the daddy, oh! Whack for the daddy, oh! It's whiskey in the shadows. So no one So guys, that was a little taste of the Merry Ploughboys over in Ireland. Just one of the many cultural experiences available to you when on tour with us in the UK and Ireland. Now, we are a small nation here in the UK and Ireland. We are a collection of small islands, the two major ones, of course, being Ireland itself and the British Isles. However, we have, for our size, one of the most diverse landscapes in the world. And we have mountains, we have seas, we have forests, we have rainforests, we even have a desert, uh, which is in Dungeness, not the most nicest place in the world. However, it's interesting to note. Now, we try and include any of the land landscape highlights for you on these tours. And some of these such places are in Ireland, we have the Giant's Causeway. This was a picture of some of our group climbing up on the legendary basalt columns caused by the cooling of the volcanic rock many, many millennia ago. Again, one of the big draws of Ireland is its natural beauty. And we don't just include the Giant's Causeway, we also have the Cliffs of Moher. Now, as well as getting to see some of these legendary red locations, you'll also get to hear some of the legendary stories about how they were formed. Yes, we will learn about the geology behind them, but you'll also hear about the legendary giants who fought across the causeway. You'll learn about the leprechauns, the fairies, the mythical Kelpie horses of Scotland. So there's a lot of folklore ingrained in the landscape as well. And really when we talk about history, culture and landscape, they all intertwine into one beautiful narrative of these beautiful lands. Uh, now, as well as the Giant's Causeway, we're also going to take lots of photos on beautiful scenic places like this. This was the Carricka Reed Bridge up in Ireland too. However, it's not just Ireland that has beautiful landscapes to explore. Here we have Lake Windermere on the Lake District. And this is one of our stops on the Great Britain tour. And we'll be stopping here for a few hours in the afternoon where there's an option to take a boat ride on Lake Windermere or you can explore the town taking in the beautiful lake views themselves. However, you may be surprised to know there's actually only officially one lake in the Lake District. The rest are what we call waters and meres. And this dates back to the old Viking settlements in the Lake District and the Scandinavian influence on the language of the area. Again, this is something we'll talk more about on the tours and you'll learn all about the different terminologies of the different areas of the UK and the diverse cultures that have helped make us the people that we are today. And of course, when it comes to landscape, one of the top rated places you can go to is the Highlands. And here we have a lovely picture of the Glencoe Valley. Uh, you have some of the three sister mountains up there. 
and of course the site of the legendary Glencoe Massacre, uh, a massive, one of the most horrific events to take place. It was the breaking of ancient laws of hospitality when the Campbells massacred many of the McDonald clan in their sleep after having been received for a couple of weeks. This is a story that many of our passengers always eagerly look forward to hearing. Uh, and talking of the clans and history as well, you know, you don't just learn about the history of the landscape of the people when you come here. It's also largely a history of you guys. Uh, the amount of times I've been on these tours and I've had people with heritage from Ireland, England and Scotland. Some people have family names that originate in these places and them coming to them and you guys coming here can be as much about you learning about your own ancestral roots as well as about the landscapes themselves. Uh, and on that note, we do have a range of genealogy, genealogy tests available, uh, especially over the Glasnevin Cemetery, if you're on the UK and Ireland tour. But as well as that, there are various places all over the UK and Ireland where you can test your genealogy, if that's something that you're interested in. Now, it is time for some myth busters. And again, there are so many common misconceptions people have about the UK and Ireland, whether it's about like I said before, the weather, the people, the culture. And I've been doing a bit of research and talking to some of my passengers recently about some of the myths that they believe in. And here are some that we're going to bust for you now. So first up, it always rains. And this is one of the biggest things that people ask when coming here. Is it going to be raining the whole time? We've heard that the UK is grey, it's cloudy, it's gloomy, always raining. It does rain fairly often, however, it's quite intermittent and it does not rain all the time. I've actually just got back from a seven day tour of Ireland and it was sunny every single day, not a single drop of rain. Now this is somewhat of a miracle. Usually we have at least maybe half a day of rain sometimes, but for the most part from April through to September, October, you can expect a nice balance of sun, a little bit of overcast with the odd bit of rain. Uh, of course, it has to rain sometimes, otherwise we wouldn't have the beautiful lush greenery that we do, but the rain is nowhere near as intense as people make out. But do make sure you bring a waterproof and an umbrella. Next up, we're all obsessed with tea. We do love our tea, and there's a good reason for this, and this dates back to the East India Trading Company, when tea became one of the biggest traded commodities in England. And originally it was a very, very expensive substance and it became very popular with the wealthier members of society, the aristocrats, the royal family, those that had the money to afford it. And tea became a great symbol of status and wealth. And so as it became more readily available and affordable, those that couldn't previously afford it wish to own this item to use it to give them a sense of status themselves. And this is one of the reasons it became so ingrained in our culture. However, I am not a tea drinker. I am very much a coffee man. And you'll find here it's a mix between tea and coffee. Uh, so whilst tea you will find almost everywhere, I wouldn't say we're as obsessed with it as people make out. Next up, this is what I heard from a couple of my American passengers and I was complimented on my teeth, uh, which is very kind of them. And they said that they thought that all English people had awful teeth. They'd seen it on TV shows. They'd heard it from friends. And when they came here, they were surprised about the high level of dental hygiene that we do have. Uh, again, one of the reasons this might come from is linked to the whole tea obsession because sugar was also a big obsession for a while to the point where if you were rich enough to own sugar and use it with everything that you drunk, it meant that you had a very high level of status. And so if you couldn't afford sugar and everything, uh, you would sometimes, and this is, this is a story that I've heard, and again, with every story, you take it with a pinch of salt, that people would blacken their teeth and make them dirtier to appear like they could afford sugar to therefore make them appear wealthy. So there was a time when to have bad teeth was considered a sign of wealth, because it meant you could afford sugar. A similar thing happened in ancient Egypt with honey. However, today this is not the case. Dental hygiene we take very seriously here and we do not all have bad teeth. Number four, the Scottish hate the English. Yep, along with the Irish and the Welsh and everyone else that surrounds England. Uh, no, this is not true. And whilst our history with the Scots is a very tumultuous one and it is one that includes a lot of oppression a lot of brutality. Uh, ultimately now we do work together and there's very little hatred between the Scottish and the English. 
I've been to Scotland many times. If I walk into a Scottish pub and they hear my English accent, it's always going to be a bit of banter, but I'm always received very, very warmly. And now we acknowledge each other's history. We acknowledge the mistakes of the past. And we very much consider ourselves brothers and sisters with one another. Uh, and the hatred no longer exists for the most part. There is obviously between every neighboring country, there's always going to be a little tension between some of the inhabitants. But here in the UK and even over in Ireland between us and the, the English uh, and them, there's very much a very friendly, loving atmosphere. One that I've experienced every time I've been across the borders and one that I'm sure you guys will experience as well. The Irish are the world's biggest drinkers. Not true. They are the world's second biggest drinkers behind the Czechs. Uh, so, yes, alcohol is a big part of Irish culture, of course. They created whiskey. Uh, sometimes the Scottish tried to claim this, but it was very much the Irish who invented whiskey. It was actually a, a group of monks in Ireland who created whiskey. And Ushita Betha, I think they called it, uh, which stands for the water of life. Uh, when these monks distilled this old beer making process and came up with this whiskey, they believed it gave them a great sense of spirituality it heightened their ability to get in touch with their god and practice their spiritual practices obviously to us we call this being drunk um and it did become a big part of irish culture however the irish are not always drunk they're not always out in the pubs and whilst pubs are a big focal point for socializing for the spreading of culture whether it be for the talking of politics the sharing of music uh, or just generally catching up with friends and family. Uh, they are not the world's biggest drinkers. However, if you are in Ireland, do go to an Irish pub because even as an Englishman, I have to say they are the best in the world. Next up, all English people speak like Hugh Grant. I always find this one very interesting because here in England, there are two stereotypes that people have of the English. You have the European stereotype of the English, which is that we wear dirty white vests, we all talk a bit like this, we drink beer, and we go to football games and we're violent. And then there's the American stereotype that we all talk a little bit like Queen and Hugh Grant and all very, very posh and, of course, very, very well mannered. And I like to think that both of them are a little bit true, depending on where you go. But no, we don't all speak like Hugh Grant. There is a whole multitude of accents here in just England alone, let alone Scotland and Ireland. You can go two hours on a train from uh, London to Liverpool and the accent can literally sound like a different language. And you'll get to experience all of the wonderful languages and accents here in the UK, as well as those that do sound like Hugh Grant. But it doesn't apply to all of us. Next up, Wales is part of England. So, of course, when here in the UK, you've got the United Kingdom, you've got Great Britain, you have the British Isles, uh, then you have Ireland, then you have Scotland, England and Wales all mixed up in that. And it can get quite confusing. Now, England and Wales are separate countries, but they are both parts of the United Kingdom or even Great Britain, as is Northern Ireland. Uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. So Wales is not part of England. However, it is subject to the royal family. So the Queen of England is the Queen of Scotland and also of Wales. However, they do also have their own parliament. So in Cardiff, you have the parliament buildings. Scotland, it's the same thing. And this is something we talk a bit more about in a lot more detail when on tour. And you'll learn about all the inner political workings between the countries in their own rights and as well as what makes them connected. A particularly interesting subject at the moment, given the whole recent Brexit situation and the potential another ref 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 referendum <laughs> happening in Scotland for their independence. Uh, so, again, this is an interesting part of what makes us British here and something you can learn a bit more about when down here. Next up, the Welsh are all descendants of sheep farmers or miners. Uh, this is one that was asked of me by a passenger back in 2019. And so in Wales, agriculture is a huge part of the culture there. The sheep outnumber the people four to one. And mining is also a big part of the culture, especially the slate of the copper mines. However, whilst this is the case, not all Welsh people operate in these two industries. There are a whole range of industries in Wales, as you have in any country. Uh, tourism being a huge one of them, uh, finance, economics, education, all sorts going on. So there are a lot of sheep there, there are a lot of farmers. However, not all Welsh people descend from them. 
Next up, so similar to Wales being part of England, Ireland and Northern Ireland are one country. There are many that would love this to be so, and wars have been fought over this contention for a long time. There are still those campaigning for it. However, Northern Ireland are not, are not part of the same country. Northern Ireland is part of the UK, and Ireland is what we call the Republic of Ireland. It's a completely independent country from the United Kingdom and from Northern Ireland. And so what usually leads from, from this question is, is there a hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland? There's not. The last time there was anything resembling a hard border was during a period of the Troubles, when from 1969 to 1998, a huge, huge violence period, starting with a series of civil rights protests for the uh, Catholics to gain their rights under Protestant rule in Northern Ireland, which led to loads of violent outbursts right up until the Good Friday Agreement in 1998. During this time, there were talks and obviously people campaigning to make Northern Ireland part of Ireland, but this is something I've been talking about for hours, I've been talking about for the past week. Many of the people in Northern Ireland identify more as British than as Irish, and this is because going back 100 years to the, of the early plantations in the early 17th century, they trace their ancestry back to there, whereas those that are of a more Republican or Catholic denomination tends to trace their roots back to the original island of Ireland. And again, this is something that you could talk about for hours, and we will go into a lot of detail when on tour in these regions. And number 10, it's expensive. So this can depend on where you are in the UK and Ireland. Again, London is a very expensive city. Dublin is also an expensive city. They're capitals. When you get out into the countryside, the prices do vary quite a lot. There are cheap areas and more expensive areas. But you should be prepared to pay a lot for a pint in London or Dublin, whereas you'll get a good deal if you're in the countryside. So again, it does vary uh, and not expensive somewhere like Northern Europe. Okay, so I've seen a lot of uh, questions coming up. Again, we're gonna get to the questions a bit later, uh, but a lot of them have been to do with COVID related issues, with testing and things like this. So post-COVID travel, uh, here's a little picture of me on our recent Christmas tour uh, with two of our passengers dressed in their lovely elf jumpers. And so a lot of the countries we travel to now do have different rules and regulations. In the UK and Ireland, the restrictions have all lifted. So you do not need to test to come into Ireland to come into the UK anymore. However, on the expat tours, we do have still have a test before travel policy. So it is required that you do do an antigen or PCR test within three days before the tour begins. And this is because we just want to give everyone peace of mind when on tours and so that everyone knows they're coming with a nice clean bill of health beforehand. Now, in terms of when we're on the tours, we do still have mask wearing policies on the coach. However, when you're in and around these countries, it is not a requirement for you to wear a mask anymore. A lot of places like Ireland still advise wearing them when in public places in busy areas but it's not enforced. Uh, in terms of whether having to test before going home, a lot of these countries, despite not requiring testing before coming into their countries, they're keenly aware that a lot of you will have to test before going home, depending on where you're from. And now a lot of airports have testing in the airports. Heathrow in London, you can book tests before you fly in the airport. And it's also the same in Dublin as well. And in terms of the coaches, in addition to the mask policy, we also like to say, keeping it clean, living the dream. So we're very, very big on sanitization. We have hand sanitizers installed all over the coach for you guys. We encourage regular hand washing, things like this. We also do have tests available. So if someone does get sick, we do ask that people do test if they feel themselves developing symptoms. Despite the fact that the countries don't require this by law, we still have it as part of an expat policy. So we still have safety in mind. However, it is a lot easier now to get into these countries and to spend time in them once you're there. And again, the UK and Ireland is now completely open for everyone. And we look forward to welcoming you here. Again, if you have any more questions about COVID related issues, do ask them in the Q&A and we'll go through those at the end. So now it's time to hear a little bit about what other people have to say about the tours they have been on with us in the UK and Ireland. So I've just got a few quotes here from previous reviews from passengers that I would like to share with you guys. Firstly, this was for our Great Britain tour. I had such a good week traveling the UK and have fallen in love with England. 
Percy, our tour leader, was awesome. Very friendly and helpful. Can't wait to do another expat tour next year. This one is from our Ireland Explorer Tour. The Ireland Tour is fantastic. You get to see Ireland and meet new expat family while sampling Guinness. Ireland is also so green and lush with amazing things to see and do. Tour leader Mike and driver Pat were a great team, keeping us all organized, informed, while being great fun. This one is from our UK and Ireland tour. I had the time of my life. Our tour leader, Percy, was fun, professional and organized. Truly brilliant. We visited remarkably beautiful places, touched on history and fun facts and delighted in delicious foods. It was amazing. I went as a solo traveler and ended with lifetime friends and memories. I can't wait for my next expat trip. And finally, this tour took us to some of the greatest historical sites in the UK, from York to Edinburgh to Scotland, the Highlands, Liverpool, Cardiff, Bath and Stonehenge. It was fast paced, but easy to be able to take photos, shop and get nourishment. Mike, the tour guide, had it all together. His stories kept us entertained and educated to the history of the sites. So these are a few words from some of our passengers. And as you can see, people have a great time on these tours. And these places, these historical places you go to, whether it's the cathedrals, the castles, the beautiful cliffs, the restaurants, the pubs, we try to bring these places alive to you and the people that you'll encounter on the way and the locals will also do the same. Now, as well as the testimonials I've provided here, I wanna show you a small video. And this is from one of our passengers a few years back who traveled to Ireland with us who wanted to share his experience on tour with anyone that was willing to watch. So I'm just going to put this video on for you guys now. I'm Chris Farrell. I'm from Australia, Melbourne, Victoria. We had planned to do a little bit of searching for my great grandparents grave. Didn't really know where we we're going to go with it. I had originally planned to hire a car from England, ferry it over to Ireland and do a lot of it as self-driving. Issues with getting cars over to Ireland and Northern Ireland. And when we worked out the sums, it worked out just as cheap to get someone else to do all the driving and staying at all the hotels instead of us doing B&Bs. This is our first trip on expat. And when we found out we were going to Glasnevin uh, Cemetery and that's where my great grandparents were buried. I thought, my God, how lucky are we? And then to get to get access to a genealogist there, and I simply went up there, provided the names, some dates, and they were able to take. That was fantastic, and they took us right down to the graves. I took the photos. It was just sensational. Certainly, uh, this is the way to do it, particularly in a country you don't know, and no good trying to second guess where to stay. They know all the right places. We chose Expat because, well, it was going to places that we wanted to see that other tours weren't offering. Cheapness, it was very cheap. Um, we got in nice and early. The earlier you go with Expat, the cheaper it is. So we'll certainly be coming with Expat again. Uh, the group that we're with, you know, we all seem to have a um, similar demographic. Um, it's not too wide a difference and uh, all pleasant people from all over the world. The tour guide, she's really uh, been terrific, Kaylee. It's entertaining. A lot of knowledge being shared too. I mean, you come not just for the scenery and the new place, but you like to get a bit of history and extremely good. I believe that everyone should try uh, at least going on a bus tour. And I believe that expat's probably the way to go. It's affordable and you're getting to see, we've been with some real expensive ones and there's no difference. So I'd say give expat a try, they're good. So there you go, guys. There's a, a few words from one of our previous passengers there. Again, genealogy is something that a lot of our passengers are really interested in, because as I said before, they're coming here as much to learn about their own ancestry and history, as well as the history of the place itself. And that's something that if you speak to your tour leaders, they can arrange for you when on tour in a whole variety of locations. So next up, guys, I'm just gonna move on to the next slide. 
Ooh. And we were going so well. So, uh, I'm just going to find the. <laughs> I might require a tiny bit of assistance from the lovely Angus. Hey, Angus. So, did it crash again? No, no, no. It was completely my fault. So, okay. I have pressed something that I shouldn't have pressed. Uh, so, everyone, this is Angus, by the way. This is our social media guy. He's the heart and soul of everything social media expat explore. If you've ever been on Facebook and someone has replied to you, it's this guy, the one man on. Yeah, thank you, Pierre. All right, cheers, mate. Uh, yes, just need to get this up. And F11. And do, 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 do. Nearly, we're just going to move on to this one and go into slideshow mode. And happy days back in the game. Thanks so much, Angus. I would say a round of applause from him, but he won't hear any of the clapping, so I will little clap myself. <laughs> so, guys, now on to tours and optionals. Now, this is where we'll talk about some of the tours that are available to explore the UK and Ireland, and also some of the optional experiences and how the whole optional process works. So, first up, we have our Great Britain tour. This is a seven-day tour, and it visits three countries. This tour can actually also be added as an extension to the European Delights tour. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you on the website through the link in the presentation, these tours and what they look like. So if you go onto the website and look at the tours, you can find out all the information about the tour, the price, the amount of time, the average price per day. And you can see some pictures from previous passengers, a general summary. Very importantly, you can see a map of where we go. So again, the Great Britain tour from London up to Cambridge, York, all the way up at various places to the top, uh, Edinburgh, Loch Ness, and all the way back down again. Now, when looking at these maps online, the colors mean different things. So the numbers mean the amount of nights you spend there. The blue circle is where you have an optional experience available. And the yellow circle means there is a stop there, sometimes with an included experience, but you're not spending a night there. Now, as we scroll down, you can see information about the accommodation. We're going to talk about hotels in the UK and Ireland generally uh, in the next few slides, because that's something we often get a lot of questions about. Uh, you can read all about the experiences that are included in the tour package that you pay. So as you can see, a whole load of experiences included, 18 experiences in total. Uh, again, accommodation. So if you're asking about hotels, where are we going to stay? Who are we going to be with? Blah, blah, blah. If you click on the down arrow here, you'll see the hotels we use. So in York, it could either be the Ibis York Centre Hotel or the Ibis York Centre Hotel. So only one of two hotels. In Edinburgh, it can be either of the hotels you see here. So this is a way for you guys to get a bit of a taste of what the accommodation is going to look like in advance. Then importantly, you move on to the itineraries. I'm not gonna go through every itinerary in detail right now because we'd be here for a long time, but I just wanna direct your attention to where you can find some more information about the itineraries that we offer on these tours. And that's here in the itinerary section. If you click on each day, you'll get a breakdown of the day where the dinner is included, lunch and breakfast, as you can see here. Now, optionals, guys. Now, optional experiences are experiences that we have arranged that you can choose to join us in or not. Now, some people ask, why do we have optionals? Why don't we just include everything, jack the price up so you know what you're getting straight from the beginning? The reason is simple, is that not every optional is for everyone. And some people might want to do their own thing. However, we believe these optionals enhance the experience for you, but it's your choice to join them. Now, firstly, we ensure that every optional has time to be enjoyed. So optionals, um, apart from in a very, very few rare circumstances, some of the European tours will never overlap so that you have the opportunity to do everything available. We selected a range of optionals to try and give you tastes of culture, history, and other experiences available. The way they work is you will talk to your tour leader who will give you information, usually in the form of a handout about what the optionals are, how much they cost, when and where they're happening. You'll then sign up. Now, all payments for optionals do take place usually on the coach and are paid in cash in local currency. Currency is something we're gonna talk about when we get to the tip slide. Again, on the website, you can find out details about all the optionals. 
For example, on the Great Britain tour, we have The Spirit of Scotland, Conquer the Capital Edinburgh, Loch Ness Cruise, The Beatles Story Museum, Shakespeare's Birthplace, Roman Baths and Stonehenge. Now, as a group, we are afforded certain privileges. We do get good rates as a group, often also because we pay in cash. And so these discounts are passed on to you and will often get you good rates that are very competitive and often include travel to the experiences as well, which again adds a lot of value to what you're paying for. Now, there are some optionals that you can book in advance. For example, I recently ran the Island Explorer Tour. And on this tour, day one includes the Discover Dublin optional, where we go for a traditional Irish pub lunch. We then go down to the Epic Immigration Centre, all finishing at the Guinness Storehouse for the traditional Guinness experience, learning all about the history of the brand, the brewing process, and of course, with a little bit of tasting. Now this we need to know in advance, so you're given an option through your booking agent with Expat Explore and Customer Service to make that payment in advance, so you don't have to worry about doing so on board. Now also, we are now launching a new initiative where some of you who are planning to travel in the future may have already received this, you'll be getting emails from your tour leaders way in advance of your tour who would have created Facebook groups. These Facebook groups will be used to share photos, give you information, but also they can be a place for you to talk to your tour leader before the tour begins. In here, you can ask questions about the optionals, you can put your names down for certain things and just make general inquiries for your tour leaders. Just do be mindful that tour leaders are very, very busy and they won't always get back to you straight away. So you can always contact customer service if you need a bit more information and a bit quicker as well. Now, going on to our next tour. So we also have the Irish Explorer. So the Irish Explorer is the tour I've just gotten back from. This is a seven day tour of Ireland. And this is where you're gonna do everything Irish. You're gonna learn all about the history of the country, see all the main sites, and you get a more intensive look at Ireland itself. Again, the layout is the same as the previous one. You have all your prices here, dates and prices. You can look at the itinerary, the summary. You'll see a map of what's available here as well. Now, again, the optionals on this one are a little bit different from the Great Britain one, being in a different location. The start of the tour, you have the optional of Discover Dublin, which I just explained to you. This is one that you can sign up for in advance. You then have the Titanic Belfast experience. This is an award-winning museum, absolutely fantastic interactive experience. There's even a ride in there where you sit in a carriage and it takes you through all the old industrial workings of where they created parts of the engine and various other parts of the Titanic itself, all situated in the center of the Harland and Wolf shipyard, what was once the largest shipyard in the world where the Titanic was made. Uh, this is a wonderful experience. Again, it's won various awards and we've never had bad feedback from it. People have always raved about it and actually it's often exceeded expectations. Now this next one, guys, is one that I always get very excited about. This is my favorite day of any tour, whether it's on the continent in Europe, the UK and Ireland, it is the Ring of Kerry. And I absolutely love it. Uh, if any of you, I don't know if you were, any of you were, participating in the Expat Explore community group uh, in 2020. Some friends of mine, we ran a few YouTube podcasts called On The Road. And there was one where I got to talk about the UK and Ireland then. And you may remember my levels of excitement at this day trip. And um, this is a day trip around the peninsula in County Kerry, the Ivera Peninsula. And this is one of the most fantastic days you'll ever do. This is where you get to see a traditional sheepdog show. You'll learn all about the shepherds of Ireland. You'll get to go to the Red Fox Inn and see the traditional uh, peat bog village. You'll see the absolutely amazing dog on a donkey. Uh, you'll also get to do a jaunting experience where, and by jaunting, we mean you'll be on the horse and carriage. You'll be taken around the Killarney National Park. You'll see Ross Castle, and you'll get to make some Irishmen from the deep south who are absolutely as hilarious as they are knowledgeable. And at least 60% of what they say is true. Uh, again, this is a full day trip when in Kerry and it's one of our top rated optional activities. Again, it's amazing value. I've worked for quite a few companies or companies over the years, some of which in Ireland, and they offer this a very competitive rate that includes a lot of experiences that other companies often don't include. So definitely worth doing. 
Then we have the Galway Boat Cruise. This will take you up the River Corrib on a boat known as the Corrib Princess. You'll be given a demonstration as to how to make the perfect Irish coffee. Uh, and then you'll be taken up the Corrib, out into Loch Corrib, and you'll learn all about the history of Galway from the waterside. And you'll also get a small demonstration of traditional Irish dance. And finally, the Irish Music Pub, and this will be at the Merry Ploughboy. This is the video we watched earlier. You'll hear all of the traditional Irish classic songs, learn about traditional Irish folklore, you'll hear stories, hear music, and of course, get to see the legendary river dance of Ireland as well. As well as that, you'll get to eat some delicious food. You'll have lamb from the Wicklow Mountains, you will have organic chicken from the Limerick region, as well as fresh salmon and trout from on the wild Atlantic way. Absolutely fantastic evening. Again, some of these you can book in advance on this tour. You can actually book Discover Dublin and the Irish Music Pub, the Mary Ploughboys, in advance before your tour, which saves you bringing that extra cash and dealing with when on tour. However, you will still have an opportunity to sign up on tour for the Mary Ploughboys as well. So there's a little bit about our Irish Explorer. Next up, we have a tour that essentially combines the two of these, but you just have the five days in Ireland. Uh, and this is the best of UK and Ireland. I'm actually leading this tour on Saturday. I go out with a lovely group. And this is a tour I've did a few times in 2019. Absolutely fantastic tour. And again, this is a bit of a longer tour and it will take you everywhere from England, uh, around into Wales, over into Ireland for five days. You'll take the ferry from Belfast over to Cairn, in Scotland up around Scotland, up to Inverness, down to Edinburgh, and back down the east coast of England. And it includes absolutely everything you could want to see. Uh, it's truly, truly incredible. Again, we'll go scroll down through to show you the map. Here is the map, and you can see the route here. Again, starting in London, heading left on the map, or probably better to say west, uh, down towards, for day one, Stonehenge, Bath, one night in Cardiff, and continues from there, as you can see here. Uh, again, on this tour, there are 23 experiences included. Absolutely fantastic. There's so much going on here. And again, compared to some of the Europe tours, because the UK and Ireland is a much smaller landmass, the drives between locations aren't huge. It's not like you're going to be on the coach for seven hours in a day. The stops aren't too far from each other, so it doesn't involve as much driving. So that is a massive bonus for some people. Uh, and again, definitely worth having a read through this in your spare time of the itinerary. Check out some of the hotels. Uh, and also, we'll just go down to the optionals here. And the optionals on this one are essentially a combination of the optionals that you would experience on the Island Explorer and the Great Britain tour. So again, Stonehenge, Roman Bars, the Beatles Story Museum, Shakespeare's Birthplace, Irish Music Pub. Galway Cruise, uh, Spirit of Scotland, Conquer the Capital, Edinburgh, absolutely fantastic day. Uh, the Loch Ness Cruise, the Annick Castle and Gardens, that's one for the Harry Potter fans. If, uh, if you remember in the first film where they had the Quidditch training with the broomsticks, that took place in Annick Castle. Absolutely stunning grounds of the castle and one of the largest collection of poisonous plants in the UK, uh, for anyone who's into that sort of thing. Uh, then the Titanic Belfast experience, again, and it castles something you can do independently of the gardens. Ireland's identity, this is where you can do the uh, Glasnevin Cemetery, where you can do the genealogy tests and learn about some of Ireland's heroes from Daniel O'Connell to Michael Collins and various others. And then the whiskey and the Guinness experience as well. So there's a lot going on there. So definitely worth going onto the website, looking at the optionals in advance to get an idea of what you want to do. Your tour leader will give you a handout with more information on the optionals when they meet you, as well as in the Facebook group in advance too. Uh, again, any questions about that, you can get in touch with your tour leader, the customer service team in advance as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have next up something very, very exciting. As this year, you may have seen our lovely boss, Carl, the, one of the co-owners of Expat Explore. He had a webinar recently talking about our brand new rail tours. And one of these rail tours is going to be the Scotland Rail Express. And this is an eight day uh, tour of not 31 countries, uh, one country. <laughs> uh, and of course, that is Scotland. And this is a brand new tour we're launching, and I cannot wait to be leading some of these. 
Now, the rail tools affords us certain advantages. Again, any of you who read about the rail tools or saw the previous webinar will know it guarantees us staying in far more central locations, less travel time, uh, and it gets us right into the heart of the city as well. Now, the itinerary for this tour is absolutely fantastic. You're going to be spending two nights in Edinburgh, one night in Pitt Lockery, a beautiful Victorian style town up on the border of where the kind of just before the Cairngorms National Park between the transition of the lowlands and the highlands in Scotland, then up to Inverness for a night considered the capital of the highlands and the cultural center of highlands activity. Absolutely beautiful city with some fantastic history and scenery to go with it. You'll then take a bus for part of it as you head between Inverness and Fort William. And of course, that's where you'll find Loch Ness as well as Loch Long and Loch Uy as well. Uh, some of the most stunning scenery of the Highlands is on this small stretch. And there's actually a canal that connects all these, almost turning the large part of the top of the great fault line that divides the Highlands and the Lowlands into an island, interestingly enough. But that's something you'll learn a bit more about on the tour. Uh, and then that also includes an option with the Jacobite steam train, one of the most famous steam trains in the UK and Ireland, if not greater Europe. Uh, and so if we go down to the itinerary here, you can see a bit more of what's happening on the rail tour. Guys, I recommend checking this out. Do have a little read through. Again, these are also smaller groups. So you'll be in smaller numbers, a much more intimate experience with you and your tour leader as well. Uh, again, the itinerary, you can see down here what you're gonna be up to. And then of course, it does have some optional experiences the two of which, Edinburgh City and Castle Tour and the Jacobite Steam Train, which is one of the best experiences you can ever have. The uh, Jacobite Steam Train, as well as a few other rail lines in Scotland, have been voted some of the most beautiful train lines in the world. Uh, there is actually a book, Top 10 Train Rides in the World, if you're interested in train rides, um, as you can tell, I'm a little bit of an enthusiast, but that's absolutely fine. So do have a look at that, guys. So I am just going to be mindful of the time. So that is a little bit of information of the tours we offer. Here are some photos of, again, some of the optional Stonehenge. This is an optional that's asked about by everyone. One of the most famous landmarks in the world. This is where you can learn all about the Neolithic people of Britain. Uh, and again, many, many strange theories about the stones, everything from melting ice to aliens. Uh, an absolutely fantastic landmark. This is a picture I actually took myself on our Christmas tour. Uh, and this is a little photo of me on a tour back in 2019 on the Ring of Kerry day trip. Again, one of my favorite experiences on India tours, you can meet the legendary Irish wolfhounds, the tallest dogs in the world. And here's a little photo of myself enjoying an Irish coffee about five days ago on board the Corrib Princess boat in Galway. Again, another fantastic optional uh, that you can find a bit more about on the website. So guys, now a few tips just before we get to our Q&A. So firstly, this might answer some of your questions in advance here. We're gonna talk about money. So yes, there are two different currencies in the UK and Ireland. So in the UK, it is the British pound that we use. And over in the Republic of Ireland, it is Euros. Uh, on the Island Explorer Tour, you do spend one night in Derry slash London Derry. Uh, and when you're there, it will be pounds. You also have the Titanic experience and a morning in Belfast, which again, you'll all be using British pounds, but the majority of that tour is in Euros. The UK and Ireland Tour, those bits are in the Republic of Ireland, Euros, but Scotland and Wales use the same currency as England, the British pound. Now do be warned, in Scotland and Northern Ireland, you may sometimes receive banknotes that look a little bit different and they will say Bank of Scotland, Scottish pounds or Irish pounds. They are of exactly the same value as British pounds. They are legal tender anywhere in the UK. So if you do receive a banknote that looks a bit different from a typical pound note, uh, that's absolutely normal when in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Now, in terms of bringing money with you, some people seem to think that in the UK and Ireland, we're like back end of nowhere, little villages, there's no ATM in sight, there aren't banks anywhere, we have ATMs everywhere. So there's no need to come packing a whole bag full of lots of cash. Uh, you can draw money out when here, and we actually advise not to bring a huge amount of cash and to maybe get bits of money out as you go. You can also pay by card almost everywhere now. It is just worth being mindful of the fact that when signing up for optionals, you do have to pay in cash. 
So if you know what optionals you're going to do in advance, and you can talk to your tour leader in advance about the optionals, you can pre-plan just how much money you should bring for these experiences. Now, in terms of culture, money kind of feeds into that. A lot of people ask, is there a strong tipping culture in the UK and Ireland? And as with service industries and hospitality industries in many uh, different parts of the world, there is a very strong tipping culture here. Usually between, 20, between 10 and 20% is standard. Some places do include a service charge. Uh, they will make that known on your receipt. So do check your receipt. Even if there's a service charge, it is sometimes customary to still tip your waiter or waitress. A service charge is typically divided amongst kitchen staff, bar staff, uh, and so on. Uh, again, that applies not just to hospitality staff, to tour guides, drivers, people on the optionals. Again, your tour guide will often give you a heads up if it's an experience where tipping is usually part of it. And if in doubt, just ask guides. Now, in terms of culture in the UK, you may have ever heard the phrase, mind your P's and Q's. We are sticklers for politeness here. And so if you ever go into a bar, a restaurant, we always you know, start with a nice, hi, how are you? Lots of please and thank yous. And for some reason, we are obsessed with the word sorry. We use sorry for everything. If someone gets in your way, you end up saying sorry to them. And we say, sorry, can I talk to you, please? Sorry, can I have your attention? Sorry, sorry, sorry. So if you hear people saying sorry, it doesn't often mean that they've done anything wrong or you've done anything wrong. It's just a word that they use for most situations. Now, when you're out and about in bars and pubs, uh, your tour leads will tell you a bit more about the inner workings of these, but pub culture here is absolutely huge. It's one of the big draws of the UK and Ireland. People love to come for the pub experience. When in pubs, uh, a lot of the time, you won't always get table service. It's in pubs, it's typical to go to the bar and order your drinks there, sometimes even your food. Uh, and also in pub culture, if someone offers to buy you a drink, you can say yes, uh, but it's also polite to say no as well. Now, here in pubs, we have what we call rounds. So I know some of my American passengers, I know I'm sure it happens in the States, but here, I don't know if it's more common here, some of them weren't aware of it, where if someone buys you a drink, usually you would then buy them a drink. If you're in a group, you do rounds for each other. If you enter into a pub round system, you are now obliged to stay within that system. So if you don't want to be part of the round system and you meet a group of friendly people on a night out, uh, do politely refuse to enter into the round system. That's absolutely fine. Uh, also, guys, again, I said about accents earlier. You'll hear a lot of different accents, some of them easier to understand than others, uh, especially when you get up into the more northern regions of the UK. Uh, so again, hotels, this is something we said we were going to talk about earlier. Now, hotels in the UK and Ireland. Now, we have we don't have as much space generally. So the UK and Ireland are a lot smaller than probably some of the countries that you guys are from. And that doesn't just apply to the landmass that we live on. This also applies to the hotels, the restaurants, the roads. And you'll be amazed at some of the tight roads that we managed to get our coaches up. One, because we have fantastic drivers. Secondly, just because we're a small place. And also the hotels abide by this. Now, a lot of the hotels are in very, very beautiful old buildings, don't have so much space. So we often have the phrase that, you know, in an American or Australian hotel, you could pick a donkey up by the tail, swing it round, and it would barely touch the walls. In an English hotel, you'd be lucky to get the donkey through the door. So do just be mindful. We do always guarantee that you're going to have a comfortable bed warm water, access to free Wi-Fi, and it will be clean. However, you're not always going to have a kettle, an ironing board, uh, a sea view or something like this. So do just be mindful of this. We do use a full range of two, three, and even four star hotels. And actually on the UK tours, uh, we do have some particularly nice hotels, especially when over in Ireland. So yeah, again, you can check the hotels out on the website under the accommodation section that we looked at earlier to find out a bit more, but do just be mindful of the fact that the hotels are typically gonna be smaller than what you experience at home. And of course, it's not the warmest over here, so air conditioning isn't a big thing. Uh, sometimes you have a fan, but you won't always have air conditioning. Central heating is more common than air conditioning. So it's just worth being aware of that. Now also safety. A lot of people ask, is the UK safe? Uh, you know, do are we going to be OK? Are there pickpockets, things like this? As with anywhere in the world, it varies quite wildly. When you're in the big cities, it's always worth being mindful. Something my dad always used to say to me when I was younger is wherever you are, be aware. And I'd say the same to my passengers. 
So if you're walking through Dublin, Edinburgh, you know, these are touristic hotspots and there are always going to be people who will try to take advantage of this. So do be mindful of your belongings. I always like to check my pockets, make sure you've got no loose items hanging out, your bags are done up. And again, if you're on public transport, be careful of this. As always with hotels, hotels that we stay at are often used to having groups. Some people know that groups stay in these hotels. So if your tour leader says to you, you're going to be having breakfast and then loading the coach afterwards, don't bring your suitcase to breakfast and leave it lying around in the lobby, then go get breakfast. Always have your breakfast, then go and get your luggage and take it to the coach without leaving it unattended. So all these little things that can keep you safe. Now, it's not quite as intense as on the continent. You know, when you're in Paris, Rome, you've got these like, waves of people coming up to you trying to sell you all sorts of trinkets and they can be quite intense sometimes again some of you i'm sure have experiences with the bracelet men the clipboard ladies we don't have so much of this in the uk so you don't need to worry about that so much but again it's just all about being mindful wherever you are there's always going to be an element of danger but in the uk it's relatively safe you know there are some parts in the countryside you can leave your door unlocked your car door open all day go out come back and it's fine there are some places where you wouldn't even park your car in the street let alone leave it unlocked so Speak to your tour leader and they'll always update you on the safety of an area, but just always be mindful. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the main part of the presentation. We are now going to move on to the Q&A. So I've been seeing up on the screen, I'm looking at here, lots of questions coming through, little bits pinging here, there, everywhere. So I'm going to have a look through the questions. Uh, I will try to answer most of them. Uh, if I don't get to all of them, that's because there'll be a huge amount. So I'm just going to move my little mouse over now and have a little look. I'm going to have a little sip of water first as well, because hydration is key. OK, so uh, when I click on the questions, guys, they should appear. So you'll be able to see the question that we are answering. So I'm just going to click on the first one here. And I have pressed publish and I'm going to go on to the Q&A section. So this is from Sherry. I have traveler's insurance through my credit card. Uh, what exactly do I have to prove this in order to go on the tour? So usually the customer service team will ask you for the company that have provided them. So if you've done it through a credit card, what is the name of the bank or company you have your credit card with? And then the insurance reference number. Um, this should all be provided ahead of schedule. Uh, if there's anything wrong with this, and for example, when I turn up to a tour, I have a list of everyone's insurance. If someone doesn't have insurance on the list, it hasn't come through for whatever, I will then ask you on the first day of tour to get this as it is a requirement. You do have insurance before being able to embark on the tour. So again, the name of the provider, whether it's through a credit card, a bank or whoever, whoever the company is, and then the reference number and insurance number as well. Hopefully that answers that. OK, next up. Yes, this is a great question. Can I sing in the cavern? So, guys, in the cavern, each night is different. They do sometimes have bands on who will invite people to the stage to sing, but not always. And it all depends on what night of the week, what's happening that day. So that's not guaranteed. However, there is a very, very famous karaoke bar five doors down from the cavern called The Grapes. And this is where the Beatles, they would go to the cavern to perform. Once they finished, they would walk down to the grapes to have their drinks. So you can sit on the same table where the Beatles sat. And here you can sing to your heart's content. Again, you may sometimes be able to get up with the band on stage in the cavern, but it's not guaranteed. It all depends on who's playing that night. Again, the cavern does get very busy. So do be mindful that if you go there and they are inviting people up, you do have to be quite lucky to be able to get on the stage and sing. So the answer to the insurance one, where do we see the prices of the optional tours? So guys, to see the prices of the optional tours, this will be provided by your tour leader. Now, typically on day one of your tour, your tour leader would provide you with a handout that will have all of the prices of the optionals. However, to give you more information in advance, the Facebook groups that we're trying to set up ahead of tours, your tour leader will provide all of the information in there about prices. If there is an optional that you can sign up for in advance and there is a potential of that, the customer service team will tell you the price of that optional in advance and then you can choose to pay in advance for that optional. But all the other optionals you'll find out either on day one or once the Facebook groups are running ahead of schedule, you'll be able to find out from your tour leader in that Facebook group. Next up. 
Uh, where are we? What is the maximum numbers? Of, what are the max number of passengers on the bus? So guys, at the moment we are still operating full capacity buses up to. So the passengers can be up to 50 people. Uh, and Sorry guys, just a small technical glitch there. Um, so yeah, up to 50 people on buses. However, tours at the moment are varying. I had 37 people on a tour. I've got a sold out tour coming up. So again, it can be up to 50 people, but tours are selling out. So again, when you go on the website, it will tell you how many seats are remaining on the coaches. Luke, what will happen if we tested positive just before the tour starts? Can we get a refund or reschedule the out tour? That is something that you will have to speak to customer services about. Uh, and again, it will depends. You can get insurance. So, for example, you book a tour. Some insurance providers will cover whether COVID impacts your tour. So, to my knowledge, it's up to you to have insurance for your travel that covers the potential of COVID. Um, it's not something that is covered by expat if you get COVID the day before. So again, do make sure you look for that information with your insurance provider before you start the tour. But that is something that is worth double checking with customer services team uh, before making any big decisions on that. I'm going on tour mid-July. Do you have an estimate on when we'll get an invite to join the FB group from my tour? So guys, the whole Facebook group thing is a new initiative so we are aiming to do them as ahead as ahead of schedule as possible so again at the moment it could be a week before it could be further before so as we're trying to roll this out we are trying to become get further and further ahead of the tours as to when the facebook groups are created but again it's a new initiative so it might not be until a little bit closer towards the tour at the moment but that time will extend as time goes on. But again, you can ask any questions either in the Facebook uh, Expert Explore community page on Facebook or to your customer service team as well. Uh, are there Beatles sightseeing in London if you do arrive early? Uh, yes, so if you're into the Beatles in London, obviously Abbey Road Studios is the place to go. They do have touristic experiences available. I believe there are various walking tour companies that will include that area as well. Uh, again, this is something that's worth doing a bit of research on beforehand. Uh, we don't provide anything Beatles related ourselves in London, but there is stuff to do. And again, mainly focused around the Abbey Road earlier uh, area, should I say. Um, what's the best optional tour? Well, Victoria, that is a very subjective question. So it largely depends on what you're looking for out of an experience. Again, as I'm sure you will know by now, my favorite optional tour is the Ring of Kerry, just because it includes everything from the Sheepdog Show, uh, the Peatbog Village, beautiful scenery. You get to see the dog and a donkey. And in terms of variety, I think it has a very, very great amount on offer. But again, maybe you're interested in the Irish music and you want to go to the Irish music show. You might be a Titanic enthusiast and really want to learn about that. So it very much depends on what you want to get out of the experience. They all have great qualities in their own rights. So definitely worth doing a bit of research, reading through them to make that decision for yourself as well. But do the Ring of Kerry, guys. <laughs> and I think there's a do you... Those who have UK passports will not need a visa to travel to Ireland. That is correct. You do not need a visa to travel to Ireland. So obviously, with Brexit having happened recently, there is a lot of confusion about this. So the official rules at the moment, if you have a UK passport and you're traveling to anywhere within the EU, you can spend up to 90 days in the EU within any 180 day period. So you'll be absolutely fine for the tour and you do not need a visa to enter. Uh, is cash or euro required for mementos? So again, it depends on where you're buying. I'm guessing that you mean like mementos, like souvenirs and stuff like that. So if you're buying something in the Republic of Ireland, it will be euros. And if you're buying something in the United Kingdom, uh, so Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland, it will be in pounds. Again, you can pay by card a lot of places 
or cash, but it's always worth having a little bit of cash on you, but there are plenty of ATMs available as well. I hope that's what you mean by mementos. If not, I apologize. Uh, okay, I've already done that one. Uh, optionals and thumbs up to expat for taking care of passenger safety and health by COVID tests and masks in bus and enclosed areas. Thank you. Uh, not a question, but a nice bit of feedback anyway. Uh, can expat arrange for pre-tour accommodation at Greenwich pickup points? Uh, so I believe it's up to you to uh, arrange your own accommodation in advance. However, we can tell you the hotels we're going to be collecting from. So for example, in Greenwich, we pick up if we're leaving from London at the Novoto, Novotel Greenwich or the Holiday Inn Express in North Greenwich. Uh, however, if you're doing the Best of Europe tour, we also, I believe, at the Holiday Inn at the Excel Center over there. So again, do check uh, which hotels your tour departs from. You can talk to custom service, but then I, I believe that it's up to you guys to make the arrangements for your pre-tour accommodation yourselves. But we can tell you the hotels that we're going to collect from. Uh, why? There is no London staying and tours. So uh, a lot of the tours, they depart from London just because London is an easy place to get to. However, in our best of Europe tour, we do have the first day in London. And there are going to be, uh, we do have a bit of a tour around London. We are actually going to have an optional experience potentially on this tour that includes a lot of stuff within London. Uh, however, a lot of the tours now, some of them will be starting from Rome, uh, Paris and Amsterdam if they're continental tours. And those starting from London will be the UK ones, some of the Europe ones. And again, ones like the, ex, uh, the Best of Europe tour do have some London stuff involved in them as well. So do keep your eyes out for that uh, and do have a look through the different tours available to see what has anything London centric on it. Also, uh, if you are staying in London after your tour or before, you can always get in touch again with your tour leader once the Facebook group thing is rolled out for advice on what to do in London. And you can ask your tour leader when on tour for stuff to do in London when you get back from tour, if you're going to be spending a few days there, as you can with any other location. For example, I had some passengers staying in Dublin for a few days after tour, gave them plenty of things to do. So do please ask your tour leaders for any help there. And any questions that we've missed? Uh, what is this one here? Are you leading the best of UK and Ireland June 18th to the 30th, 2022? I'm not sure yet. So I'm you. I'm leading the UK and Ireland from May the 7th to the um, 12th and then to the 20th. And then I'm doing the 22nd to the 12th of June uh on a best of europe tour however from mid-june onwards i haven't had my tours confirmed yet just because as you can imagine there's a lot going on and with things that have changed lots of 2019 we don't always know our tours too far in advance uh, so it could be me however if it's not me it'll be someone that knows the region just as well as me uh, as everyone is very adept in the tours that they run but you should know your tour leader a little bit closer to the time uh, and then again you'll be able to contact them through the Facebook group in advance once you know who they are. And do you miss anything in Ireland if you do the 13 day best of Ireland best of tour instead of the Irish Explorer? So again, you are in Ireland for two less days. And I would say the things that you miss, so you do a night in Derry. So you get more time in Derry when you are on the Irish Explorer Tour uh, and you do it in a reverse order and you get to spend a bit more time in each location. So again, uh, there are a few extra things included. So for example, Bunratty Castle is an afternoon included experience where you get to explore a traditional early 19th century village in castle grounds and you get a guided tour of Bunratty Castle. That's not included on the or part of the UK and Ireland tour, but it is included on the Irish uh, Island Explorer. Uh, so again, if you go onto the, the website, you can make a comparison of the two. And it's more about the time you get there. So on the UK and Ireland tour, you're in Ireland for five days and also the order in which you do it. So, for example, on the UK and Ireland tour, you spend two nights in Dublin and then you go anti-clockwise around Dublin, uh, around Ireland. But then on the best of on the Island Explorer, you have one night in Dublin, you have the first day in Dublin, then you go 
anti-clockwise as opposed to clockwise uh, and you then get a night in Dublin at the end of the tour as well. So again, you get a bit more time in each destination. You get a spend, to spend a night in Derry um, that you don't get to do on the UK and Ireland. Uh, and again, more time each destination as well. And uh, what is the cost of visiting the Titanic uh, exhibit in euros, please? I believe it is about 25 euros. Uh, but again, uh, always check with your toy because for example, if you're doing the tour this year, it could be one price. And then if you book the tour for next year, the uh, the museum may have changed their rates. So again, these are always being reviewed. So it all depends on if you're doing the tour this year or next year. So it's always checking close to the time with your tour leader on the Facebook group uh, or with them when you start the tour. And I think that might be all of the questions, guys. Uh, ah, happen to know how young adults aged 20 to 24 find either of these tours? That's a great question. So these tours do have a wide range of ages. Uh, for example, on the um, Island Explorer tour I just ran, uh, we had a couple of solo travelers in their mid 20s, some in their 30s. We had a load of couples all kind of aged between sort of 50 right up to the age of 70. Uh, again, we had some couples in their 30s. So these tours have a huge range of ages. Uh, and so yeah, definitely something for everyone and you'll find there's a mix. Again, I've had some tours in the UK and Ireland where actually it's been a bit of a younger crowd. And I've done some tours where the average age has been probably 40 plus. So it does vary quite a lot on these tours, but usually you'll find you have a nice mix of ages. So you guys age 20 to 24, you won't feel too out of place on one of these tours. And Kelly, do I show up to the bus on the first day with a COVID test result in hand or do you do test when I get there? So you are required to do the test in advance. So I think it's two to three days before the test if you could do an antigen or PCR test. Uh, the antigens are a lot cheaper to do and easier and quicker results. And then we will check your results upon arrival. So again, first thing I do when you will come, I check that you've all got insurance. I tick you off my list. Uh, I check that obviously everyone's got their vaccines. And then I also, unless they have a document showing that they've had COVID, I believe. And then I will check everyone's test results as well. So it's up to you to do the test before. Uh, we will have tests on the coach, but that's more for if anyone gets sick on tour. And of course, it's important to remember guys, colds and flus do exist um you know people are always going to get sick people are always going to get a common cold and stuff like that so you know we do be mindful of the fact that, that does also exist but we do have tests available but it's very much up to you to arrange your own test before traveling with us uh, how many will be the maximum we've done that one where can we see where can we see the recording? So if you have tuned in a bit late uh, or you're asking for someone to want to see the recording, you should be able to get a link to the recording through your on Facebook. Yes, the lovely Angus has just come in and told me uh, you can find the link on Facebook. So join the Expat Explore community page. If you just search Expat Explore community on Facebook, you will then gain access to the recording. And I believe it will be available indefinitely. So you can watch it as many times as you like. I think that's pretty much all the questions, guys. Uh, so I am probably going to finish it there as it's been one hour and 20 minutes. Again, if you do have any more questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with the customer service team. They're absolutely amazing at replying. You can also ask in the Expat Explore community Facebook page. It's been lovely meeting you all, even though I haven't seen any of you. I'm sure I'll get to see some of you soon. And there is only one thing left to do, ladies and gentlemen. And let me come down to my screen. And that is to come and join us on tour. So whether it's with myself or any of the other fantastic tour leaders at Expat Explore, you're guaranteed to have a wonderful experience. And I like to say always, there's no such thing as a bad question. The only bad question is one that remains unasked. So please get in touch and we'll see you soon.